Hello everybody, my name is Damon, and welcome back to some more Steins Gate. I just finished recording the end of Negligee, so I figured I might as well start uh, trying to finish this uh, visual novel off again. Uh, last we left off, I'm pretty sure shit went down. And by went down, I mean is going down. Of course, we deleted the the email that uh, that showed up, but I... No, I don't want to skip. Uh, no, turn that off, please. Uh, however, we could see the the first one that showed up with the, the jelly. There was another one that showed up. Uh, it was a girl. It was a decapitated girl. Uh, the head of a decapitated girl, rather. Um, uh, and said we know too much. So, <laughs> shit's going down. After we finish shopping, Curry and I walk along the evening streets. Nothing, nothing bad going on here. Hey, Curry Sue. Oh yeah! I remember this well. I forgot that I don't want to remember this, but I totally do. I really, really don't want to remember this. I really don't want to have to go through this, but uh, I guess you guys are watching for a reason, right? Assuming you're watching, uh, there might be no one watching this video or the series anymore. Who knows? She looks like she's got something to say. She keeps stealing glances at me. Uh, are you upset? Upset? Uh, uh, I don't think that was a curry suit voice. She frowns like she didn't expect that question. Finally, she faces this way. Uh, about our decision not to attempt a uh, time loop experiment. No, I'm not upset. Humans are temporal beings. That's a head... a, a headgear quote. I was actually relieved when you made the decision not to use the machine. If you hadn't been there, I might not have been able to stop myself. Thank you. What's this? <laughs> Gratitude? Does she have a fever? Put my hand to her forehead to check. Curse twitches. Uh, what are you doing? You're talking like an assistant for a change. I thought you might have a fever. Chop my hand. I'm not grateful to you or anything, okay? <clears throat> What? Oh, uh, I, I, I can't go back, uh... I'm not grateful for you or anything, okay? Her voice is louder than it should be, and several people glance at us. Kurisu blushes and blushes and hangs her head. <laughs> uh, Noir. If Dar were here, he'd probably get all excited and say, Oh, real soon today! Sweet! Yeah, yeah, Noir. Anyway... Kurisu clears her throat and returns to her usual sour expression. That thank you was just a formality. Don't get me wrong, okay? Of course. I only did what I had to. I am the founder of the Future Gadget Lab, Hoin Kiyoma. My first priority is to protect the welfare of my lab mems. So I have no need for your thanks. And yet you always talk about plunging the world into chaos. You are my allies. The world is my enemy. I'm speechless. You're too self-righteous. You say he's speechless, yet you're speaking. Don't argue semantics. It's quite mysterious, really. It's only been two weeks since Kurisa and I met, and yet it already feels natural for us to be walking together, exchanging banter like this. Perhaps pooling our efforts to create something new, dangerous though it may be, has brought us closer together. I admit that her knowledge and skills are impressive. Really afraid to answer this mail. Uh, not sure Curse is gonna get pissed? What time warrior? Don't forget what Teeter said. What? One self? Hold on. One self. It's easy to pretend to be someone you're not. Um. Right. And she was. That's when she was gonna leave. Uh. When did Teeter last message me? Uh. A while ago. What did Teeter tell me? To be the Messiah. Don't forget what Cheater said. Okay. Creepy. I'd like to remain at the lab if at all possible, but she said she's going back to America this month. It's already the 13th, so I wonder when she plans to return. Decide to ask her. Oh, yeah. I forgot to get a plane ticket. I got too caught up in improving the phone wave. Going public with the time the machine will send the world into an uproar. We also plan to expose CERN, remember? You may not be able to go back to America for some time. 
I guess you're right. I should call Mama and let her know. Looks like things are going to get busy. Naturally, I want Kurosu to stay with us to the end. Yeah, a little bit after we return to the lab, Mayuri gets back. Party time, hooray! Tutu, I'm back! Hey, Mayuri. Seems Mayuri went to Lukako's. Uh, Development Council. Suza shows up a few minutes later and our Development Council comes to order. What are you talking about, man? What Oak Green calls a <laughs> party? <laughs> okay. Just, just as simple as you can get. Dora ordered three pizzas. We also line up all the snacks we bought on the table. Just like the party we had a few days ago to cheer up Suzawa that you were not a part of. I already wanted to decorate the room, but since everyone's tired, I dismissed it as unnecessary. Looks like Suzawa managed to retrieve her jacket from Mr. Braun. Man, that was terrible. I was stuck looking like an exhibitionist all day. The Braun workshop's workshops closed. Suzawa made sure the 42-inch CRT was turned off. So there's no need to fear any malfunction from the time loop machine. Heavy sigh escapes my throat. I realize that I've been tense and nervous since the time loop machine was completed. Now I can finally relax. The topic of the time loop machine has become taboo. Taboo. Even Kurosu doesn't bring it up during the meeting. Daru. Why did you order the exact same pizzas before? I went the pizza boxes to find the exact same ones he got for Suzo's party. Because I like it. Naturally, I'm not amused. Okarin, oh, Okarin. Oh, I caught Betty Shan and Luca Chan, but they said they couldn't come. Oh, do they have plans? Betty Shan is at Aina tournament. Crap, I should have gone to cheer. How careless of me. And Luca Chan seemed embarrassed for some reason. Maybe she thinks she'll wear her co Maybe she thinks she'll make her wear a costume again. You still haven't convinced her to cosplay? Then what was the point of completing the costume? She said it was embarrassing. I kept telling her cuteness is justice, but she never listens. Cuteness is justice. Is that what they say? You're cute too, Christian. Gracie <laughs> <laughs> eh. <laughs> doesn't know how to react. She blushes. And Myra starts teasing her like a drunk old man. There's no alcohol at this party, of course. Hey! Kamiwa's coming up. Wanna go? I can't make something new, but I have a costume of post-awakening Seda from Blood Tune I made last year. I think the size is just right for, Kiri for Christian too. Me? Cosplay? Carissa looks conflicted, then she murmurs. I'm sorta interested. She sure could have fooled us before pretending you have no interest in otaku culture. Oh, but I refuse to do it in public though. You don't have to show anyone, but eventually you'll want them to see the cosplay demon compels you. The... cosplay demon. That reminds me, Christian. You're always wearing that cute uniform. What school is it from? Oh, this? Kirsten looks up her necktie. I attended Aya Main for about two weeks. I modeled this outfit after the uniform. Oh, the uniform's really cute, but you made it even cuter. You ain't a really good design sense. I'll bring the costume tomorrow, okay? Will you try it on then? <laughs> sure. Looks like Curse approves of the cuteness is justice philosophy. Of course, she's not wrong. When's the photo shoot? Good to know you're still a pervert, Hashida. Come on! It's Blood Tooth Santa! She's got Pan Moro going on. Pan Moro? The major page is completely exposed! Oh, no, no way! It's okay! You may not know this, but last year there was a really popular saying. They're not panties, so it's not embarrassing. It's pretty embarrassing, trust me! Wait, okay, it's a promise. Maybe you shouldn't bother. Suzuha speaks, her tone sharp. Uh? She's scowling at Kurisu again. Uh... I'm pretty sure this is the scene I don't want, but this is different from how I recall the anime being? Why is there intense music now? She's scowling at Kurisu again? Suddenly the atmosphere in the room changes. 
Oh! That's why there's intense music. How do I... Nope. No. Okay, that's how I open the tips menu. Nope. 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 How do I... Oh, that's, that's how I tried hitting that before and it didn't work. <gasps> Interesting! Um, yeah, it's always these... The, the, the two conflicting parties. What's that supposed to mean? Naturally, my strong will assistant isn't one to back down from a fight. So I fly between the two girls. I didn't mean to ask. Did I do something to you? Not to me. But I know everything you have done. What do you mean? I've done nothing to be guilty of. Perhaps. But I know your true nature. Wow, you could see into my heart? That's groundbreaking technology. I'd love to hear how it works. It's not science. It's... a prediction. So you're just making it up. I know. <sighs> we got a situation here. Oh, Karin. Mary clings to me with teary eyes. Stop them from fighting. <laughs> this looks like a job for the one and only Hoin Kiyoma. I insert myself between the two girls. Break it up, you two! I, Hoin Kiyoma, shall decide this dispute. They both glare up at me. Although I'm afraid for my life, I harden my resolve. The mission must succeed! First, I focus on Kurisu. <laughs> Blurry. Assistant! I didn't raise you this way! You didn't raise me at all! If you want to become a true mad scientist, you must learn to keep your emotions in check, even as you cackle your way to victory. Nobody asked you, and I'm already a scientist. <sighs> Next, I switch focus to Suzuma. Warrior! Your enemy is served, remember? You must conserve your strength for Ragnarok. I warned you before, Okabe Intero. Makise Curry Sue is a threat. What? You're gonna mention that here? Now? Oh, what's this about, Okabe? Rise like laser beams boring into my skull. I want nothing more than to flee for my life. My is watching me anxiously. I need to defuse the situation. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't I don't even Looks like neither of you is willing to back down. So be it. Fight to your heart's content. Fight until there is no more fight to be had. Then share a manly handshake by the river and let friendship blossom. But in the future! When it comes time for you to venture out into the real world, I hope you remember one thing. Nobody likes a mood killer. <laughs> Getting out of by both of them at the same time sends shivers down my spine. It's coming. I quickly seize my right arm. No! Why now? Of all times. Calm down, right arm of mine! I turn around and head back to my area. I'm sorry, Mayuri. At this rate, I'll end up hurting those two. I have no choice. The rest is up to you. Jeez. Mayuri puffs her cheeks over, puffs, puffs her cheeks out, and goes over to the two girls. Um, guys, Mayushi doesn't like when you fight. Let's all get along, okay? Hearing this, the two companions reluctantly comply. I expected this would happen. My area is the oil that keeps the gears of this lab churning along. The throbbing of my right arm dissipates. <laughs> Dora comes over to chat with Suzo and gradually peace returns to the lab. Kurisu is in the development room. Uh, I just realized the, the uh, funniness of the last sentence there. Kurisu is in the development room making a call. Probably to her mother in America. Sit on the sofa and watch TV while sipping Dr. P. TV is running a game show where contestants guess at the prices of popular items at high class restaurants. Myra sits down next to me. She peels a banana and begins eating it. Hey, Okarin. Hmm? Myra slowly looks around the lab, smiling all the while. It's been really lively here the pa these past few weeks, huh? Yeah, I guess it has. I established the future gadget laboratory around the time I entered college. It's the first step in my plan to bring chaos to the world. That was around the middle of March this year, which means it's been almost five months. 
Not half a month after it was established, my race showed up. Still not sure why, and became a lab mem. For about a month, it was just me and my Eerie. Then in, my, in early May, I, got, I finally got Darrow to join. All it took was, to him to, was telling him the lab was just a three minute walk from May Queen Yon Squared. But... He's here now. How is he here now if May Queen Yon Squared never existed? I don't know. This location on the outskirts of Akiba has always been quiet. Maya isn't the type to object to every little thing like Kurasu, nor the type to make dumb jokes like Daru, so the lab was very peaceful back in those days. It was quite a pleasant place to be. And now the lab mem count has increased to eight! It happened in the blink of an eye, so it seems. They didn't come today, but Luko visits occasionally, and Far East is a familiar face of May Queen Yan to Square, or at least she was before May Queen disappeared. I remember feeling out of place the first time I came to Akiba, but now, it's like a second home. It's fun! Mayuri too seems pleased by the increase of the lab mems. Um, now that there are eight lab mems, Mayushi thinks it's getting a little cramped in here. First, we don't have enough chairs. So far only has room for two. Then there's Dara's personal de desk chair, though those are the only chairs in the lounge. There's some pipe chairs in the development room, but they need to stay there. We should buy more. Do you have money, Okurin? New chairs will take all my savings. Then I need to get a part-time job again. I guess you can use some of my salary. We need a new microwave too. Otherwise, I can't warm up my juicy chicken number one. Yeah, sorry about that. Cutting off my Irish chicken supply might actually kill her. But Myri, when we turn over the, the time leap machine, the reward money will solve all our problems. Will it be enough to pay for chairs and a microwave on top of the higher rent? It'll be enough. More than enough. Wow, that's great, Okurin! Why are you so happy? Just look, we made so many friends! There's Daru-kun, Chris-chan, Luka-chan, Suzu-san, Moika-san, Ferish-chan, Fran-san, Nai-chan, and more! There, uh, there is in fact not more. <laughs> she gazes wistfully into the distance. In the spring when you started this lamb, you seemed so lonely. But now you're fine. You don't need me to be your hostage anymore. What do you... What do you mean I try to ask before I can finish? Yep, here we go. Okay, here it starts. It starts. An urgent news bulletin appears on the TV. Subtitles, subtitles read, Terrorist bomb threat suspends Yamanote Sobu Kane Tohoko lines. Whatever, whatever. Train lines have been halted. A bomb threat? Hang on. Those lines all passed through Akiba. How is Mayushi gonna get home? Oh yeah, I should call home. Hmm. Bomb thread. I don't know why. I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah! Yeah! I sure do have a bad feeling about this! Only the lines passing through Akihabara are suspended. As if that were the target. Could that be it? No, don't show it! Don't show it! I am holding a hand in front of my eyes so I do not see! Oh, oh, could the bomb be at Akihabara Station? I thought it was gonna flash the thing again. I get a cold feeling on my stomach. Gotta cover my, head, my my eyes again. No, no, okay, never mind. I thought I keep thinking the image is gonna flash, and that image is very creepy, and I don't want to see it ever again. Oh, I need to know. I need to know. You've completed the timely machine, right? Huh? Well, yeah. Okay. I just remembered I got something to do. I'm going out. Okay, all right, no, scene is, scene is replaying itself in my mind. I am remembering all of this. I really wish I didn't, though I, I don't know whether to be grateful that I know what's coming up or mortified that I know what's coming up. Suzu leaves the lab without another word. What's wrong with her? Suzu is acting strange. Is it related to the bomb threat? Why did she ask about the time leap machine? Something occurs to me. No, 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 no. 230 gigabytes are received. 
We're watching you! You know too much. Who sent them? And there's more. No, 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 nope, not looking again. Okay, yep, CERN! Yep. Alright, saying. Uh, uh, Jellyman, I'm trying to cover my eyes so I can see the, the words without looking at the images. Z program, waiting for it. Government secrets. Organization. Men in black. Media 300. Time the machine. What did Curiosu say? We may have created a monster here. Taken separately, each of these elements was insignificant. But if I consider them part of a single line, they all point to one inescapable truth. We've come too far. Beavis is in my heart in an icy grip. I feel anxiety eating in my brain. I can't breathe. Even though it's hot and humid, my body shivers. Should we run? Get out while we still can? We can't use the trains? What about the subway? Oh, what a taxi be better? Nobody's saying anything. Nobody's doing anything. What should we do? Suddenly, there's a softening against my head. I look down to see my area's hand holding mine. When I look up, I see worry written on her face. It's okay. I'm just being paranoid. It's all a coincidence. Tomorrow, we'll get rid of the time of the machine. Then we can forget all of this happened. Pretend it was just a dream. We never invented a time machine. I don't need money. As long as we can forget about today and welcome tomorrow, we'll be okay, won't we? My anxiety doesn't go away. Look over Myri's head. Look over Myri's head at the entrance of the lab. Door is unlocked. Anyone could just waltz right in. Your siren's whirling a few streets away. Bomb threat has Akiba on uproar. Yet here in our corner of Akiba, it's so quiet. I right, squeezes my hand with her warm, slender fingers. I squeeze back. Hi there, guys. Next thing I know, the door slams open. Five men burst into the lab. Their movements are swift and sure, professional. Each of them is carrying a gun. I can't get rid of the top left part of this screen, but... Hi. They spread out just inside the door and aim their weapons at us. Well, this is different than the anime. I'm pretty sure in the anime they were all in black suits and you couldn't see their faces. But no, they are... These guys are very clearly well-toned and defined. It'll happen so fast, no one has time to scream. Men are foreigners, mix of races, dressed casually in colorful shirts and shorts and jeans. But their arms are thick with muscle, and their eyes are hard and cold as ice. Two of them are holding pistols. The other three have assault rifles. AK-47s in Akiba. Is this some kind of joke? One thing is certain. These guys aren't tourists. Hands in the air. Nobody move. Dark skin, crew cut man, barks in order. Feels like I'm dreaming. Did I fall asleep watching an action movie? This is the first time so many people have gathered in this room. Suddenly, the lab feels small. What an odd thing to be thinking at a time like this. First to obey is Daru. Then Curry's that raise their hands. Then me. Last is Mayuri. Silence. Time seems to grind to a halt. Men say nothing, but their guns remain steady. Muzzles pointed at us. On the TV, a comedian laughs. What is this? We're on candid camera. Then I hear a new sound coming from outside. Sounds of high heels. Woman is coming up the stairs. He's been waiting for her? Is she their leader? Squad of battle-hardened commandos, led by a beautiful woman. <laughs> it's like something out of a manga. Nothing seems real. Before long, the woman appears. Hi there, Moika. Kiryu. Moika? Part-time editor. Male demon, shining finger, who's never seen without her phone. Lab Mem 005. Moika. She's their leader? 
least imposing woman I've ever met? Even now, she doesn't meet my stare. Her eyes are aimed down at the floor. What's going on here? Um... Moika-san? We're taking the time machine. As always, her words are barely audible. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Laughable! And yet I can't laugh! My heart is the jackhammer in my chest. Inside of my mouth is drier than a desert. I stay still, with my hands in the air. Makise Kurisu, Okabiri Intero, Hashira Itaru, the three of you will come with us. I, I don't understand. Why is Moka here? I don't know. But I have to ask. What's going on here? I can't answer that. This is a joke! Right? Moka shakes her head. You don't need to know. You can't resist. Come with us. Wh where? No reply. She doesn't intend to answer that either. Dangerous. These guys are dangerous. Look at their guns. Nothing good could happen if we go with them. I try to refuse, but my voice catches in my throat. I can't stop staring at their guns. Are they real? They're not going to start shooting, are they? I, n not going anywhere until you answer. You can't refuse. You have nowhere to run. We have men stationed throughout Akihabara. Wait. Something clicks in my head. It was them! They sent the bomb threat! They stopped the trains! Why? To keep us here? Just for that? I don't want to hurt anyone. The three of you, come with us. Why? Curse, who has kept silent till now, finally opens her mouth. Why just the three of us? That's when I realized that Mari wasn't included in Moka's demand. She only wants Karisu, Daru, and me. I'm not answering your questions. Come with us. It's your only choice. We're not getting anywhere. Oh, look at him. Daru's voice is shaking. Turn my head to look at him. He's deathly pale. Don't you think we should do what she says? But, uh, unless she tells me the reason... Honestly, I have no idea what to do. My heart is still fluttering in my chest. It seems more like a dream than reality. I'm not a military otaku. I've never seen a real gun. Black shine of their weapons some look somehow tacky. They lack the imposing feel you expect. I'd believe her if she told me they were fake. Mario suddenly speaks up. moika san you're a lab mip too, aren't you? It's as if Mayuri asked my question for me. Moka was a strange woman, but I welcomed her as a lab mem all the same. What is she thinking right now? An answer. Moka pulls a gun from her belt and points it at us. I realize that Moka isn't holding her phone. This is the first time I've seen her without it. Not like that matters now. Moka's gun is Moka's gun hand is trembling. Is the situation affecting her too? It must be. She's terrified of talking to people. Our mission... is to silence you. Silence us? You refuse to come will change nothing. Does that mean she plans to kill us? Why? What did we do? Who sent you? Who are you people? We... Moka suddenly lifts her head. For perhaps the third time since I've known her, she looks straight at me. Her eyes are dark and empty. I'm from CERN. CERN? M4! M4! Dark skinned man speaks up. Is he addressing Moika? Watch your tongue! Moika hangs her head again. In my head, I replay the words she just spoke. CERN. They're from CERN? Why CERN? 
course. Who else could it be? Come with us, now. Mocha raises her voice in frustration. If you continue to resist, I'll have to resort to extreme measures. Mocha slowly raises her gun. She points the muzzle at... Uh, Mayuri? My whole body instantly goes cold. Shina Mayuri is not needed. Stop! I lunge at Mocha, but the dark-skinned man is faster. Uh, uh. Something strikes my chin with crushing force. Shock numbs my entire body. Stars explode behind my eyes. I fall on my knees, powerless to stand. Everything goes dark. What happened? Did he hit me with the butt of his rifle? Oh, good I look up. Myri, face streaked with tears, is reaching out to me as if begging for help. Over her shoulder, I see Mocha ready her gun. Uh, I try to yell, stop, but my voice catches in my throat. Nothing comes out but a pitiful wheeze. Someone, anyone, please, stop her. Stop Moika! Moika's lips move. She's mumbling something. Her mouth opens and closes robotically. My blood curdles. No! A sharp, dry crack splits the air. Time slows to a crawl. Mocha pulled the trigger. Blood spurts from... I... I catch her. Her body's limp. Like a pup with no strings. Her head and arms dangle lifelessly. The smell of gunpowder fills my nose. And then, the smell of blood. Mm -hmm. Daru clutches his head and falls to his knees, screaming at the top of his lungs. Sound jerks me back to my senses. In my arms, Mario takes one short, shallow breath. And then... <laughs> Mayuri? <laughs> She's dead. Mayuri's dead. Her face is covered in blood. The blood stains my hands. It's warm. <laughs> You three, come with us, now. No more warnings. Resist and we'll kill you too. I hear a voice. I can't comprehend what it's saying. What is this? What's going on here? Is this a joke? We may have created a monster here. This is a dream, right? Right? I feel nothing. My mind is blank. Shake Myri's shoulder. Myri? <laughs> Wake up, Myri. You'll catch cold if you sleep here. If you're tired, you could stay overnight. Or I could take you home if you'd prefer. Or ride the train back to Ikeburuku together. Like we used to before Daru joined. When it was just the two of us. Myri's her smile wore through my head. A thousand different smiles from a thousand different occasions. If I look away, she'll disappear. She always disappears. But now you're fine. You don't need me to be your hostage anymore. <clears throat> no, Myri. I still need you. Laugh for me. <laughs> like you always do. Agreeing with your silly dudes that are... Tell me it's a lie. Tell me you're alright. Mayuri? <laughs> Me? 
Yeah, I, I, I can't do that justice. Red flames consume my mind. An affair of rage and hate and rage and hate and the burning desire to kill everything I see. I gently lay the motionless Myra on the floor. I stand up. Then I fling myself at Moika. Okabe! Okabe! Before I can take a step, someone grabs my hand from behind. Okabe. You can't! Let me go! Let me go! <laughs> They'll kill you! Moika's gun is aimed at my head. My finger is already on the trigger. You're gonna kill me too! If you resist. Please, Okabe, do what she says, okay? Otherwise, they'll kill you too! Turn my hand from Curse's grip. My vision is a tunnel with Moika on the other side. She won't get away with this. She killed my area in cold blood. I'll do the same to her. Moka pulls the trigger. Eh? Sound of the shot smites upon my eardrums. I feel a sharp pain on the side of my head. I need to lose my balance again. I'm still alive. What happened? I realize that Moka's gun is lying at her feet. Beside it is a small stone. Someone must have thrown it and knocked her gun aside. Get down! Urgh! Suddenly, Suza is there in the doorway, knocking one man down in the blink of an eye. Before anyone can react, she darts into another man's range and delivers a piercing elbow strike to his solar plexus. Man drops to his knees, gasping for air. Manning men turn their guns on her, but she throws the incapacitated man towards them to block their aim. She then slides into the feet of a single man at the rear. <clears throat> she then slides into the feet of a man of the man at the rear, tripping him forward and in a single in a smooth. A single smooth flowing motion drives her knee into the man's face as he falls. I'm sorry, mind is a little preoccupied at the moment for reading. Who the hell? Dark skinned man aims his rifle. Before he can fire, Susa snatches a stun attacker's gun and shoots him. Oh! Blood spurts from the man's hand. Without pausing, Susa leaps into the air and delivers a soaring round ass kick to his jaw. Enough. Okay. Next thing I know, five men are down, and Moka's gun is aimed at Suzuwa's face. Suzuwa doesn't back down. Her gun is trained on Moka's neck. Standoff. Neither moves. Silence returns to the room. Who are you? 42. Suzuwa's reply makes no sense. She glances at me. TV. What's she saying? Turned on. What? Suddenly, Cursor springs up and makes a break for the development room. Don't move! That's my line! <laughs> Suddenly, realize the meaning of Suzuha's words. 42 inch TV downstairs. It's on. She wants me to use the time leap machine? Look at Myra's body. She's lying there quietly. Her eyes are closed. They'll never open again. One of the men who's been knocked out starts to moan. If they wake up, it's all over. Suzu looks at me again. Her eyes implore me to make my move. If I use the machine, I can avert my Yuri's death. At the same time, I could fry my brain. Fry my brain? So what? What is there to fear? My Yuri's dead, shot in cold blood. This isn't right. I won't accept it. And change it. Change the past. You have the power. Use it! I stagger into the development room. Kurusu is about to put on the headgear. I pull it away from her. Okabe! I'm going back. No! I should be the one to- I grab Kurusu's wrist as she tries to take it back. I stare into her eyes. I sweat with tears. I will save my Yuri. But what if it fails? I ignore and put on the headgear. Mocha's last shot grazed the side of my head. My ears are still ringing, and there's blood on my neck. Doesn't matter. I might fail. I might even die. But I have to try. It's my only chance to save my Uri. 
Cursor bites her lip and activates the X68000. Okabirito! One of them's moving! Get in there! Kill them! Um, kids. Crew Cup Man staggers to the development room. I can purely on this thing. I'll grab future gadget number four. Mode stick from the shelf and flick the switch. White smoke instantly fills the room, rendering it impossible to see. <laughs> Gaizo! Uh, Okabe, are you sure? Are you sure about this? Really? Do it! Curry, so activate the damn machine already! I... Pain flares in my right arm. Was I shot? Doesn't matter. I see blue white light shining through the smoke. Discharge is starting. The light rapidly grows brighter. Floor begins to shake. Singularity is open! I crouch down. Hold the headset steady with one hand. <clears throat> Wait for me, Mary. I won't die here! I'll cross through time to save you! Leap. My memories! Leap to the past! Leap! What explodes into light? Okay, then! Alright! Yeah! 48 hours into the past. Chapter 6. Metaphysics Necrosis.